See the plant plug, everything is stock, it's organic I don't take much to put a seed inside the planet It's way more about what you do after you plant it It's all a cycle, go and cook a plate and smash it, yeah She got all the needs for your seeds, yeah, yeah Hit the knees, gotta pull out all the weeds, yeah, yeah Don't forget, never be scared of the bees, yeah, yeah She your medicine What up everybody? That was my new jingle. Shout out to Humble Jones for making that. I confused the hell out of that man. I said I want crunk, funk, disco. And he's like, girl, if you don't make up your mind, get off playing on my phone like that. So he made the jingle for me. I really appreciate it. And welcome to the Plant Plug Podcast. We're on season three. I'm going to clap it up every time we're on season three because we made it this far. We're still living. And also, I'm so proud of myself and I'm proud of everybody here. And I'm proud of, I'm really proud of black people. I must say. And this is the Christmas episode. Merry Christmas. Wow. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> also, uh, let's see, Kwanzaa's coming up. And we have New Year's. And we have chitlins and black eyed peas. I can smell it. Greens I can, I can and smell cornbread. it through the screen. If you were watching this and you are cleaning those damn things, I can smell it through the screen. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> There's tradition to that. There's definitely tradition to that. We talked in, in another episode about uh, soul food and why we eat those things that we do. But uh, damn, my dad used to tear those up. I'm not a chitlin girl. You're not? No. No. I, I know you look like they've been offered to you, though. <laughs> you really do. My cousin said, I'll give you $20 if you eat did you? this spoonful of chitlins. I did. The taste was in my <laughs> mouth for like two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Sometimes it tastes it like out. it tastes like the back of a boot. Mm. It tastes like a savory back of the boot, like it's simmered <laughs> for a while. It does. Like if you ever like, I smell things before I. You know, I just I love the smell <clears> of new <throat> shoes, and it just reminds me of like those brand new Timberlands that, and you just stepped in mud, but clean mud, and then put hot sauce on it. No disrespect, but everybody no. Not there's, no the same. there's no. There's no. Like it has that essence and that undertone and like that kind of like earthiness to them because it's guts. It's, yeah. it's pretty much just guts. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they've the been intestines. they've been used before. Chitlins have been used. Those are pre-owned. That's a pre-owned <laughs> food. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Antoinette. She is the owner and operator and currently the face of the Mud Mom on Instagram. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. I just really had to give people that visual about uh, what we grew up on, yeah. what we eat as That's a people. Real, uh, real quick, because it is the season. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm drooling for some reason. I, I must have got the taste or something. I'm like savoring. I'm like, mm. <laughs> But <laughs> tell us a little bit more about where people can find you and what you happen to do. Okay, so you can find me on Instagram and TikTok. They are both the Mud Mama. The. 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 <laughs> the Mud Mama. And that's Mama with two M's. So. Oh. The other spelling was taken. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Everybody knows the plight of the plant plug, mm -hmm. let alone being a plug. There are currently a dozen in operation right now. I really need y'all to stop. But the same thing goes. But now people know where they find you and they know that it's really, really you. What do you specialize in? So really it's like herbalism and you know ancient healing perspectives, really um, bringing that to the forefront, bringing that to the present. But I do talk a lot about menstrual health. Okay. I am very concerned about the health of our vaginas. Yes, she said it. <laughs> I've been trying to get her to say it. I thought she wasn't. We're here to save the vaginas. We are. Put it on a shirt. <laughs> I really, I really want. And to get the owners of vaginas. Not owners, together. no, because some people really think they own them and they're not theirs. <laughs> That's true. Some people really think they own them and that is You're not right. yours. <laughs> Those, yeah, the ones that have that. You're right. The ones that uh, have. Not apprehended those appendages, but the ones where they were installed. Yeah. Like, yeah, they were factory installed. There's been a huge, you know, health gender gap. So it's very important that we bring, you know. The recognition. Uh, yeah, we bring menstrual health, vaginal health to the forefront. Suite. Yeah. Yeah. When I was, uh, I was used to work with this group called Aunt Flo, and we specialized in getting uh, toiletries and menstruation project, uh, mm -hmm. products to people because it was socks, socks, underwear, and 
toiletries regarding menstruation are the last, if not at all, on the list for a lot of drop-in centers uh, right. and the budgeting, right? So we realized how in, in, in exclusive it is. And you know about the pink tax and things like mm -hmm. that. And um, those products suck, by the way. Men's razors are way better than women's razors, by the way. That's just marketing. But right. so we made it all inclusive and we said those with uterus, uteri. What's the plural for uterus? Wow. I don't you know. You got me. I don't know. Uterus. Uteri? I've never seen uteri. Uterine? That sounds like really right. Uterinuses? Really yeah. Uterine is a word, but yeah. you uterine. have a uterus. Yeah, so we were so it's it's really important to recognize that there is definitely a, a gender bias out there when it comes to the health, the advocate advocation of everything is fucking pink. Oh, you can swear on this podcast, by the way, just to let you know. We have upgraded. <laughs> we have upgraded. We can swear and we pay for the swears in here. <laughs> and uh, that's really that's really important, but also from a holistic perspective. By the way, as an herbalist, you are in the right place. Congratulations. <laughs> you ended up on the right podcast. Yes. And I know that. We're that's gonna, why I'm here. We're going to jump into quite a bit, and I, I definitely want people to follow you. And do you work for, are you a B2B business, like business to business? Are you business to client? How does, how how would one person approach you to uh, procure your services? Well, so far I'm, I'm you know, working with clients right now. Um, basically what I've been doing for clients at the moment is creating these personalized holistic health plans for folks. So. What I'll do is uh, I'll assess their dosha, determine their dosha. And what then, is dosha? So a dosha is like your body constitution. It's um, it comes from Ayurveda, which is a, a, is a traditional healing practice. That's and, how you say that word. Yes. <laughs> it's on so many herbs, and I thought it was Adru Varakik. I never could it's say it. It's a tricky it. one. Thank you. Say it again, please. Ayurveda. Thank you. Yeah. So like. Um, Basically, it translates to like the science of living, the science of daily living. And this is the traditional healing practice of India. And so once I determine your dosha or your body constitution, from there I can um, tailor everything to that. But then I also employ a lot of traditional Chinese medicine um, practices as well, um, dealing with yin and yang. So that's when we talk about TCM or traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. And then I also, so that's where the tongue diagnosis will come in. I oh, will look at a person's okay. tongue and from there I can tell, you know, it indicates the, the different parts of the tongue indicate um, or correlate with certain organs. Yes. And it'll let me know if there are toxins in the colon or, you know, things like that. And then, yeah, I will build out a personalized holistic health plan for them that they can. I, I'm realizing in doing this work, especially those uh, plans, is that I'm really asking a lot of my client. I'm mm -hmm. asking a lot of self-discipline mm -hmm. to really have the you know optimal health that you really need. It takes a lot of self-discipline. You have to really be ready to change your diet and to change some lifestyle habits as well. Right. Yeah, and I realized that. Well, that was something I ran into a lot working at a gym and being a personal trainer. Right. Um, it was easier to sell herbs and supplements because that a lot of people you use that to supplement discipline, even right. though it's supposed to be in addition to or because not you're severely lacking, but just to help get things up to par. The rest is all you. Yeah. And it it is a lot to ask. That's a really good perspective. The other thing too, I mean, and really like these are not new perspectives. These are you know, these are indigenous perspectives, right? Mm. Like they've all they've always known this, you know, that's why the it's called holistic health, because it's not like Western health where you go to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, these are the symptoms and they're looking at the symptoms. And then from there they diagnose and prescribe you a right. drug, right? right? Or say you need a surgical procedure. But from a holistic health perspective, it's like, let's look at the origins of that. Like, why do you even have those symptoms? Why is your body at a dis-ease? Mm. When you break down the word disease, mm -hmm. it just means you're, you're out of alignment. Yeah. And so is there lifestyle, habits, stress, work? Are you not uh, releasing emotions properly? Are you not, um, you know, are you not being creative enough in your life? Mm. You're not having that as an outlet. So all of the indigenous and ancient healing practices know to look at those things. They're looking at the whole person. They're right. not just looking at the illness. Yeah. That's where the disconnect is in the Western um, medicine sphere. Yes. Thank you, colonialism and capitalism, for once again showing your face in our <laughs> yes. everyday lives. Yeah. And, you know, speaking on that, like a lot of people don't know how our healthcare system got to where it's at right now. Right. And just to give you a little bit of history, I'm going to make it short as possible. 
you basically had like a really pivotal moment in the American medical um, history when you had this guy. He did uh, something called the Flexner Report. His name is Abraham Flexner, you can look him up. And he was going around to all the med schools to look at like what were their best practices, but also looking at like the areas of reform that mm -hmm. needed to happen. This man was not trained in medical education, right. but he was encouraged to do this and he was hired to do this. So he's looking and he's observing and basically you have a model of the medical school being it's like a proprietary business to becoming more of an entity of a college and a university. It made getting into these schools more rigorous, mm -hmm. but also you see a shift in hospitals going from being like these charitable institutions mm -hmm. to things becoming for profit. Um, and he also talked a lot about empirical science. Like you need to look at things from observation and experimentation and then you had technology advancing. And so now doctors kind of had to have more of a like scientific competence to be a doctor. So now care became the technological advances, the surgical procedures and the drug. That's the focus of now. Yes. Yes, and it's so expensive, my goodness. And then it becomes so, the medicine got commercialized and the care got commodified. Yes. And once that happened, it changed the game. And the thing that used to be, you know, have like a moral basis, which mm -hmm. is caring for people and doctors caring for patients, mm -hmm. became this very incentivized program. Like, okay, physicians, third parties, insurance companies, hospitals, they're all being incentivized, pharmaceutical companies, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just, okay, this is about me caring for you as a patient. Now it's commodified. Right. So it's it's contradictory, right? Like yes. it's for profit, big business, but then there's the moral responsibility that doctors have. So yeah, there's a whole oath and everything. So, I, but you know, growing up in a hospital, my my parent, my one of my parents worked in a hospital for thirty years. Um, you may be familiar, and I have really come across a lot of physicians that became callous, caught up in the amount of money that they do make and also the status that comes with it. I've argued right. with doctors before, not in doctors' offices. Uh, Cause I'm like, if you, I am like, a, I don't, first of all, it's a policy of mine. I do not argue with people when I'm asking them for help. That's A1 <laughs> stupid. But in other, in, other, in other forums, I've definitely argued with doctors. Um, and also people don't realize about doctors too is that they really need to check where their PhD lies because people will be a PhD and be a whole foot doctor telling you how you should run your nutrition. I'm like, fool, you do pedicures. You need to chill on that, <laughs> talking shit on me, eat my hot Cheetos. It, it, I understand balance and such, but that that's really important to know. And you know, we could do a whole other episode about the atrocities that have happened to black people as far as experimentation happened on them with all types of um, procedures. And yes. I know we could swear in here, but we're still gonna try to keep it like P13. Yes. And then also, the documentation that black people, specifically black women, feel more pain. Yes. Yes. And then yes. also they stated that homosexuality was a mental illness. Just all this mm -hmm. stuff. There's and a great book there's, for folks out there called Medical Apartheid that talks about all of the experimentation, uh, medical experimentation on black bodies. Good God. It's really it's really <laughs> deep. It's really dense. It's a very dense I'll put read. the link in the bio so they can just find it. But I, you it's know great. what? There's so much to uncover, and what I appreciate about what you do is thank you for not commodifying the hack out of it, because especially anything that, it, especially now with influencer culture and what has become, one, people don't ask for credentials, they don't ask for people's area of study. Like, I don't have credentials in gardening, but I do have six years of studying of supplement, supplements under my belt, and I've been gardening since 2009, so what? it's worth a lot. Yeah. I'm not gonna say for what it's worth. No, it's worth a lot, Yeah. because especially with uh, herbs and anything that could be packaged, pilled, and promoted and shipped and on Amazon Prime, people will just literally make that the forefront. Right now on TikTok, I'm seeing this whole greens powder. Mm -hmm. And I and oh, yeah. really check, <laughs> by the way, if you're on social media, especially the amount of social media I'm on, check the backgrounds. There's actually a certain type of marketing where something will be left in its background, so subconsciously you'll have a craving for it and pick up on it. So um, a lot of movies did this back in the day, especially in the 90s, you'll have a Pepsi can in the background. Mm -hmm. You won't think about the soda directly, you'll see it if it's being poured in front of you, but they'll have Pepsi cans in the background. Pepsi just paid who knows how much mm -hmm. to get that scene, to get that shot, but it's in the background and you just pick up on that. 
influencers do that so much now yeah. and that's what we're drowning under because i i read your captions when you put a post on they i read your so captions. Lengthy. they're so long but it's worth it but because it's worth it because <laughs> herbalism is so deep it is it's so layered yes it is i can't possibly and you know they say you know for i guess a video to be successful on tiktok or instagram whatever it needs to be basically between like 28 and 34 seconds yeah I mean, how much can you really get in that? And you have three to six seconds to capture my attention. Exactly. So, so there, there's I a whole go in on the caption. Yeah, I, I'm glad thank you that I have somebody. Who read, thank you. Thank for you. Reading. I read. I read the whole caption, and I appreciate your layout. Like, I I'm glad I have somebody talking to about it because people are like, "Girl, you're chronically online, chronically on the internet." But that's how I make my money. That's how I got to where I'm at. Because how else would you guys know about me? Because I wasn't posting on the block in 2020. I'm yeah. still not going to be posting on the block because I'm not trying to get into those things. Okay. But the thing about it is, I didn't want to be in people's front yards and backyards. And what got people, pe you know, social media opened that door for me. And uh, that, speaking of doors, we're going to segue okay. into our next segment. Okay. I know, I know you're big on sustainability. I remember, okay, first of all, I, <laughs> I remember I didn't see you for a while. And you were dressed like a watermelon at Costco. <laughs> That's when I saw you. You were dressed like a watermelon I at Costco. I was a baby doll for watermelon water. <laughs> I was like, is that you? Yep. She's like, what? <laughs> I forgot about that she job. She was dressed like a watermelon. I had a spandex one uh, piece. It was long sleeve. It, that's know. that. I saw another woman wear that. That <laughs> outfit left nothing to the imagination. No, it's, no. Yeah, nothing to I the was. Imagination. Yeah, they were using me to. Um, <laughs> Sell watermelon water. To sell watermelon water. I actually like watermelon water. It is really good. Um, <laughs> it's a good brand. <laughs> but I also remember how you were really big. You were one of the people actually that introduced sustainability to me. So really? you were not with you were not for the fast fa fast fashion. And also your business cards were on reused pizza boxes. Yes. So yes. I'm gonna play a game with you because you seem to know a lot. Oh my goodness, we're no, gonna play a game no. called I don't know a lot. Is it sustainable? <laughs> Is it sustainable? Okay. And I also, I do have a prize for you. Oh. Right here, um, depending on how well or okay. not well you do. The pressure is on. Now and, I don't want to do um, well. So sustainability from different standpoints. So there's sustainability, there's emotional sustainability, uh, physical sustainability as a human. Like, is it going to kill you if you do it? Like, you know, it, it, can I keep going on like this? There's I also economic that. sustainability. Like, mm -hmm. is this business going to go under depending on the model? And then we also have the sustainability of, uh, is it good for the planet? Right. Okay. So... What I want you to do is choose, I'm gonna bring up a topic, you tell me if it's sustain, what kind of sustainable is it? Is it economic, environmental, and tell me if it's sustainable or not. Okay. All right? Okay. Here we go, you ready? Please put on the game, game show music. Do it later, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, fast fashion, is it sustainable? No. No, it's not, do you have Hell a reason why? No. I mean, the amount of water that it uses. Thank you. People don't think about that. Yeah. Water goes into everything from cattle mm -hmm. to to water. Water especially, goes into water. Especially making those distressed jeans mm -hmm. to get the jean to look distressed that way. It requires so many, so many, so many gallons of water. Right. And we don't need to name names because people are uh, using <laughs> no, those we, promo codes right now trying to get into that. Okay. <laughs> You're correct. Next, composting. Is of it course. sustainable? It is sustainable. Okay, are you, you, are you currently composting? I am. You are composting. I'm dropping it off at your house. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, Thank, I'm the plug, I'm the plug, I got you, the plug, I got you. And I need to get it out of my apartment because I get stressed. So you actually compost in your apartment. You practice composting. See, this is the thing I want people to know, just like yours, what you do mm -hmm. as a mud mama, is that it, it is quite a bit to ask. I'm asking you to alter your lifestyle, your, your, your mm -hmm. day to day by mm -hmm. ch saving your stuff, as well as the fact that I appreciate when you come and drop off your garbage to me. It makes me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> but also that it is a practice. It's, it's something that, it's not a product. Mm -hmm. It's a practice. It's a practice of mindfulness. Yes. And that's what all this is. Yes. It's just, we're just asking everybody to be more mindful. That's it. Yes, I appreciate that. Yeah. So yes, you are correct. Okay, next. Eating meat, is it sustainable? No, but... You do. I, I want to hear the butts. I lo we yeah. love the butts on the Plant Plug podcast. We love butts. Go ahead. So no particularly like um, red meat uh, beef cow from from cows because of um, the CO2 emissions. Um, but it, it's not that meat is bad mm -hmm. inherently. It's mm -hmm. not. It has nutrients that our body needs. It's 
the hormones and the ways the the cattle and the, the, the animals are raised and what, and what it's turned into exactly Actually, what it's turned into and, and the amount of stuff that they do that is wasted yeah as well as the diseases that are spread also the supply chain issues exactly and it also goes back to the amount of water consumption and how uh, these are living things mm-hmm. as well as so but fun fact though speaking of emissions uh, we can say farts it's okay so there's actually <laughs> a, a national spirit a liquor that is made in Brazil I saw a mini documentary on it I love mini documentaries and what they did was in order to distill and get the power to run their distillers is that they would they put a dome over their own cattle farm wow. and collected the farts <laughs> so they would combust the farts they How would combust creative. it and then uh, they use sugar cane so it wasn't really rum because I know Puerto Rico, <clears throat> is, their national uh, liquor is rum. And Brazil is ca- cachaça. I think that's what it's called. Mm, I haven't said that in, in 20, 30 cachaça. years, but um, so good. That's what they do. So mm-hmm. they they com- they they, can, they capture the yeah. gases and they combust them to make their national liquor. That's what we're gonna have to do moving forward is get really creative. Okay, so we're gonna shout out to Brazil. Another thing I have to do. Okay, <laughs> next is uh, flower gardens. Are they sustainable? Oh, and you were correct on that. You're three for three right now. Keep it going. Okay. I like it. Flower gardens, are they sustainable? I'm going to say yes. Okay. Do you want me to say the why? Yeah. (laughs) So flower gardens, so there's a lot of things considered flowers. It actually turns out anything that comes from a flower is called, is considered a fruit. So there's no such thing as vegetables. That was actually terminology that was entered uh, by the European world. Oh, they affect so much. (laughs) And uh, so flowers are sustainable because we need flowers in order to get fruits and vegetables. And oh, I just... Yeah, and where do you get fruit? And then also, depending on what kind of flower you have. So if you have a flower garden that is, because of like victory gardens, things like that, the flowers you want to get are perennials. Perennials are the flowers that die and come back, die and come back, where annuals are the mm-hmm. ones that die in one session. So when you get that ugly office plant for the fourth time during the white elephant Christmas soiree at work, <laughs> where you get to see your boss do horrible karaoke while wasted, mm-hmm. take that plant, Find out what kind of plant it is. Usually they're orchids. Ten, ten, ten times out of ten, they're orchids from Trader Joe's. <laughs> and <laughs> find out what it needs because the orchid is actually a perennial. Okay. So annuals would be anything that, you know, uh, that just dies off. So roses, perennials, uh, herb bushes, perennials. My favorite actually are mums. You you do this thing called, they're it's so called the cutback. You do a cutback. You just, um, you, it's called deadheading. Not to be confused with the Grateful Dead, but it's called deadheading, where when the heads die off, you snip them back, and that encourages it to grow back. Nice. So yes, it is sustainable depending on the practice. All right. Okay. Next, electric vehicles. Sustainable. Why? Um, because we're not um, polluting our air and chipping away at the ozone layer that is protecting us. Just burning away. Burning away. Burning away. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm gonna give it half to you. Let me tell you why. Okay. So I'm gonna give it half to you. In the long run, in the long run, EVs are slightly sustainable, and I'll tell you why. I've been driving electric vehicles. I've only alone, uh, only own electric vehicles. So my whole adult driving life. Really. And I'm on my second one right now. Wow. The thing about it is the battery, once it dies out, a lot of times when it dies, it dies. And uh, there was actually a series of cars that had to be recalled because mm. it was giving off emissions that were causing people cancer. Mm. As well as the battery is very hard to recycle due to other elements that are contained in the battery. Now the amount of production that's about to happen, especially with California stopping production of other types of cars, I understand the emissions and the carbon that comes from combustion engines. Nonetheless, is that that huge shutdown and influx is long term. If certain processes are not put into place and systems, it's going to literally blow up in our faces. Wow! So it's going to keep people not being able to get around. <laughs> Even though I'm pro EV, there's an etiquette to the, the asshole that unplugged mm-hmm. my car and really <laughs> messed up my commute. There's an etiquette. All you have to do is put a note and ask. There's an oh my god! Because gas stations, you just pump your fill your stuff up and leave. Right. And but I will say, short term, it's very sustainable because, like I said, we're we're yet to see it. This is just the beginning, um, because we're not relying on fossil fuels. Right. As well as um, the combustion, the emissions, and also when I drove an EV, I realized how much I was inhaling my own emissions and didn't realize it. So when I drove, when I started driving my uh, uh, driving, when I started driving an EV, I can taste other people's cars. What? Yeah. I could taste it. So if you're so used to it, you're not going to realize the smell, right? Yeah, of but course. I was inhaling it. I, I didn't realize I was inhaling it my whole life. Then I started driving an EV. I literally had to change, to, you know, the cart button that goes from swirly to open. 
the the whatever the vents are. I don't. I'm not a car person. I don't know. Okay. But okay. I had to choose. I had to choose. I still to this day on my car is set on only the air circulates in my own car because I could taste other people's cars. Interesting. To the point I have to roll my windows up or get out of my lane. Wow. Yeah. So we don't realize we're inhaling it constantly. Yeah. So short term, I will say yes, it's sustainable. Okay. Long term, we're yet to see that. So the Put, question's up in the air. So that's one. Thanks we're for not putting done. Up on game. Okay. How much time we got left? Oh, we got plenty of time. Oh, I'm just making a mess. All right. Next, <laughs> solar panels. Is it sustainable? Yes. Why? Because you're using something that's provided in nature. Okay. To provide something that we need and. Anytime there's a relationship, which it always should be, which we have gotten away so, so far away from mm -hmm. that, you know, beneficial relationship between human and nature. Yes. We need more of that. We need to get okay. back to that. I'm going to give you a half one on that one again. I'm sorry. I'm in the long run. In the long run. So, okay. In, so this is actually the opposite of EVs. In the short run, no, because it takes about five to six years to get off the grid if economically is your goal. But when it comes to the environment, long term, it is the best because you do get off the grid, but the amount of... <sighs> The amount of materials that are needed to produce the solar panels as well as other things that just come with commodifying another thing that should be free because it's a sign and they're going to be selling us clean air soon if not already just like they're so selling another us thing. Water. so <laughs> so short answer yes long term wait no short answer no long term yes so you can actually yeah. stop paying your energy bill i think in full or it'll completely pay for itself in five years if you have the money do it next crypto yeah, this is sustainable. Oh, that's Cryptocurrency, this is not for you four Xers, because I know you guys are in the EDD line right now, and you guys have been real quiet. You guys have been so quiet, but those DWP scammers still show up to my house on hoverboards. Will you believe it? Yes. So, crypto, is it sustainable? I don't know. What does your heart tell you? Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's sustainable, actually. Um, yes. I'm gonna say yes. You're gonna say yes. Okay. I'm gonna go on the yes side. So correct me again, please. The I, answer is wrong. I'm here no, to get, I'm, here to get, I'm here to get school. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Me too. No, the answer is no. So economically, it is currently crashing and burning. The market is currently crashing and burning, but it's actually one of the been great. Up. It's okay. You're not really Sorry. missing much. People are in prison. So current, <laughs> and people are dying too. <laughs> Six people, like six people are dead. Dying because of? They just mysteriously died and committed suicide all within the span of a month of each other. A lot of people, because the thing about Web3 and things like that, and like, I'm just gonna talk about environmental, but I did, I did teach financial literacy for two years, is the reason why environmentally crypto is not sustainable is because the amount of electricity asked of Bitcoin, there's there's hundreds of coins that exist on the market and every coin is manned by a, a network. We'll just say a network for layman's terms. And so each coin has different operations and how it works in the Web3 financial sphere, right? Bitcoin, the most popular coin, right? Uses, uh, let's see, Bitcoin's number one and Ethereum's number two for popularity. Ethereum uses more electricity than the entire country of Ireland every year just to keep the coin running. Oh, wow. So I'm talking about uh, it, 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 crypto mining is actually a way for people to kind of make money because they make money on the side because you're constantly running transactions. You're constantly running transactions back and forth, things that we can't see, right? So all so during the pandemic, people stopped touching money. So all transactions, even with the introduction, actually the, not the introduction of crypto, but the popularity of crypto because Bitcoin went up to $100,000 within the last uh, year and a half is with mining, you have you need computers and there's usually humans on those end of the computers and then you'd have a lot of demands for those ledgers and pretty much like the bookkeeping of all those digital transactions to exist and still go back and back and forth. The cool thing about it though is I can send currency to somebody without the exchange rates and mm -hmm. without the time mm -hmm. it takes to do like a Western Union, right? right. But another reason why it's not sustainable um, at these rates is because the pe people think that it's a way for the power to come back in the hands of the people. Um, these people are playing chess. Yeah, corporate control has already taken over. What are you guys talking about? It's just a, it's Always. a lot more anonymous. Web three is the wild, wild west right now, and also everybody does not have access. Like if I want to send money to uh, uh, my abuela, my abuela in Guatemala, okay, first of all, how am I going to get her a coin wallet? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I and another thing which happens a lot with senior citizens, which is ageist in my opinion, yeah. is they're not taught these things. Just True. like just like a lot of 
people of color were not taught how to pay a mortgage, let alone do our taxes. I'm still trying to figure that out. Is I'm paying them. Don't cover me, please. I'm paying my taxes. I'm paying my taxes, please. They're not good. They're, they're, there's not people actually sitting down and making the education accessible. So I will say no, crypto is not sustainable environmentally and economically. A lot of people are broke, but stop playing with fire people. <laughs> I learn these things on the internet and so can you. So I think that's it. Oh, and no, no, no. Up on game. So we're gonna do, uh, do, we're gonna do rapid a, fire, this, rapid fire. Is this my last chance to win a prize? Well, you only got one wrong. Okay, cool. So you're, you're, you're fine. You know, C's get I'm degrees. Still good. If okay. you get seven out of 10, you still get to commence yeah. and graduate and rock across the stage. Uh-huh. So this is a rapid fire one. We're gonna do bam, 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 bam. You tell me yes or no. All right, here we go. Canning and jarring food, sustainable or not? Canning and jarring food is it sustainable or not? Yes or no? You got 30 no. seconds. It is sustainable. You're incorrect. All right, rainwater and collecting rainwater. <laughs> yes, I mean, canning on your own, not canning from oh, like Campbell's I, soup. I have a whole thing against canned. Okay, we'll just say jarring. Jarring, yes. Okay, I'll give it to you though because okay. I didn't go into full context. Yeah, and now I know who I've been People, talking to. People, please stop eating aluminum food. food. Okay, please. now I, I know. Sorry, my mama. Stop. I'm sorry. Okay, collecting rainwater, sustainable or not? Yes. Yes. Last but not least, urban farming as a business, is it sustainable or not? Yes. No, it is not. Let me tell you, and I'm, okay, I'm telling on myself, my <laughs> goodness. Having a garden on your own is one thing, but we're talking, we've been bringing up a lot about commodification. Right. And also influencer culture and the things that fuel other things. Like I, I can create everything on my own, in my mini farm, I make everything on my own except for soil. That's the one thing that I have to outsource is soil. Everything else I can get in my own seeds, food, mm-hmm. I can collect rainwater, all that, but also the building materials is what makes it so harmful. Mm-hmm. So urban farming as a business, not as a practice, is not sustainable in the long run because we've already seen what happened with indoor plants during the pandemic and it's out of control, yes, in my opinion. And it's true. out of control because of the pricing. And I keep saying this, we cannot eat a fiddle fig. If the zombie <laughs> apocalypse happens <laughs> on this next run, you can have a fiddle fig sandwich. Yep. You can't, we can cook it like collards. We're all gonna mm-hmm. die. Monstera. We can't eat a monstera. Yeah. We could try. <laughs> We can try. Uh, my collards are growing, by the way. I saw that she's growing collards in her apartment, I'm y'all. I'm growing collards. I'm telling you, get yes. look, get a farmer friend. They're so preferably pretty the plant too. plug. I'm gonna put you up on yes. game. You'll the be plant growing. plug got me started. See? I had my peat pellets, yes. and then I transferred them, and now they're just yeah. And we have another seed saving event coming up. So congratulations, I think, I think, you're a winner. I think by Black History Month, I'll be able to Black History Month saute up some of my okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all coming over to her house, everybody. Everybody just pile in. Mary. And we're going to all sip a little bit on that one little pot mm-hmm. and get one little bite. Yep. That's all you need. <laughs> of collard greens. So this is what you want. Oh, my goodness. Everybody, I hope you're thirsty. We're doing fire cider I shots. Kn- oh, my goodness. I hope you are thirsty. I hope you ate, though, because I... Woo! Did you eat? I, uh, enough, I think, hopefully. Okay. Because I know this will tell you. So this is up. fire cider, and I made some special for you because Thank I know you. you are big on your herbalism I and am. your plant medicine of all varieties. And I my have, whole foods. I got, these, I got these shot glasses, these clean little shots. Nice. And then we're going to do some shots of fire cider. So for people that don't know, fire cider... In, Fire cider is a practice like Eastern medicine. Yeah, it's just really up on it, and yeah. like that's another thing. I argue, I got laughed out of a doctor's office once for talking about using herbs to c- cure mm-hmm. my sixteen day cough. They put me on yeah. codeine. Yeah, they put me on that little Wayne special yeah. because they they have to give you the drug because that's incentivized for them. There's no incentives for them to give you an herb or to, to or to even send you in that direction. Right, and like. It puts money I, the in cough just kind of just removed itself, but you know how many risky texts I sent under the influence of codeine. <laughs> like my inhibitions were <laughs> vaporized. Risky text. Te- texting married people and everything. I'm a good person. Don't get me wrong, and but that love, coding make you do yeah. some things. <gasps> Will you be slipping and sliding? You don't even feel your feet anymore. But then you stop breathing, and then we have a problem. That was the whole point. Like, okay, I can't breathe because my cough is fire, but now you gave me some coding fire, right. and now I'm about to expire because I can't breathe. Slowly, I'm going and I'm, I'm not asphyxiating, but my lungs are collapsing on each other. At least that's what it feels like. You're not built you, for yes, it. Yes, thank you, thank you. Bars, you're not, bars, bars. You're not built bars. for Can coding. I get this open, please? So fire cider is pretty much anything somebody can make at home and what makes it fire for me is the cayenne and the vinegar. Mm-hmm. And I know you know a little bit and about this. And the ginger. So I grew the lemons myself. Of and course I, you did. I had white onion. I didn't have red. I'm sorry. That's red okay. onions actually, actually have natural antiseptic product, uh, mm-hmm. properties, which is like which helps with. You guys need these shots. You guys okay back there coughing and the buh, 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 buh. you okay? <laughs> Ooh. You guys know what they're doing. We just can't put it on camera. And, 
<laughs> that's what came back there. And then also I have garlic, I have ginger, I have turmeric and black pepper because I remember the, the uh, one thing that happens in the industry is that people will take a pro, a single product, whether it be protein or probiotic, and you'll see it on everything. Mm-hmm. We have the probiotic yogurt, and then. Um, this is the fire cider, everybody. With the probiotic yogurt. Ooh, it looks it's potent. Oh, it looks potent. Yeah. You see ooh, all the yeah. sediment at the bottom? That's all the turmeric, ooh. pepper, cayenne. We're going to give it a shake before I, I'm trying not to mess yeah, up with that stuff. Um, and then this sat for two weeks in my refrigerator. And the cool nice. thing is that the vinegar actually helps with preserving everything. Mm-hmm. So it's extracted exactly. into the vinegar and, and the water. And then we have turmeric, black pepper. So I remember when selling herbs and vitamins, because there's herb for everything, is turmeric being the big thing being the big cash cow and it was driving me crazy because nobody knew about turmeric and you could put a sprinkle in because it's not fda regulated people uh vitamins and supplements are not fda regulated at at whatsoever so people didn't know about curcumin and also Mm -hmm. the potency of the turmeric they were getting Mm -hmm. as well as it's it's 30 dollars a bottle which is crazy for the good stuff but black pepper making it more available black pepper is first of all it's one of the most inexpensive ingredients that we can get yep it's a peppercorn and it, it, there's black there's all different types there's green there's red but adding adding pepper to bl- black adding black pepper to turmeric increases its bioavailability which is a fancy word for absorption mm-hmm. by like i think 30 to 100 times over so we're gonna drink it up right they now it's very christmas well together. you guys should be drinking and if you get a little something chunky i apologize <laughs> i am not straining this it is go oh, you got an onion there you go you can drink it with me or not Please don't make me drink by myself. No, no. Cam, you want to try this? I'll drink with you. Cam, you going to try this? Just don't give me no chunky. Nothing chunky. <laughs> Mine has a chunk. Mine has a chunk. Oh, you got an onion, Cam. I'm sorry. I can't help oh. it. Listen, you know people tell me all the time, oh, I don't want to do that. It tastes nasty or, you know. Yeah. I but always say if you feel like a cold, an onset of a cold coming, yes. you need to eat a raw clove of garlic. And this is... um, It's not for the faint at heart, but no, it it's works. Not, it does work because it also has antibacterial properties as well. It's okay. You can let it sit there. The shot looks good. Thank you. And then also... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to drink it the These same time. These are also some, some very interesting shot glasses. Is it is it not part of the times? <laughs> Another thing that's in here I forgot. So I actually have somebody... I have a big announcement. I'm getting bees next year. So we're going to have South Central Honey real soon. I'm getting bees. And the man that's putting me up on game about bees actually sent me honey. So this is this is raw honey from San Bernardino. Oh, amazing. So this is raw amazing. honey from San Bernardino. Yeah. So And also 80% of the honey that we see on shelves is not real honey. Just let you guys know. Also, we're there's bursting. a difference, you know, uh, medicinally between uh, fresh honey and honey that's like older than six months. Yeah. And depending on your dosha, as I mentioned earlier. Come on, that, dosha. That, that, that old honey <laughs> yeah. is not it and most people's honey sit and it just sits yeah real honey does not go bad but also you just mentioned local that's what you really want to do for your diet is is be eating things that are local even like down to the minerals the salt if it can come from the from Mm -hmm. where you are the more local the food the better because you'll get those trace minerals that you need that your body needs right so i'm glad we got some all right salute everybody you don't have to take the whole thing in one go come on cam you can do it There it is. Who he's sipping it? Knock it back, Cam. You can stop whatever you want, though. Damn. Oh my goodness. Taste the. the, It's okay. Taste the health. Yeah. So it makes a fire. Is the cayenne and the apple cider vinegar raw with the mother, and then we have homegrown. So many different flavors. Yeah, it's a lot. It's like it's it's a health. Yeah, you get that garlic too. We have lemons. We have garlic, and we have (laughs) organic (laughs) ginger. And this has been stewing and brewing for months. Yeah, yeah. But I always try to tell people, you know, like this is this feeling is temporary. Yeah, and then you, you get know, over, this, and then you this get through. Unpleasant. It. Knock it back, Tony, please. Yeah, Show don't, be, how to do don't it. be a baby. But if you feel something, Damn. you're an adult. You, you got this. <laughs> he got a chunk. <laughs> he got a chunk. Yeah. <laughs> but if if you feel yourself have something coming on, coming. if you feel something, That's if you hard. feel something is about to set in. Like imagine the relief you feel, yeah. (laughs) And then you get you get it to you know really clear things up. And I appreciate it. Thank y'all for drinking with me. I don't feel so lonely anymore. Listen, the 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 health benefits are always worth it. Yeah, they're always worth the the bitter herb or the unpleasant taste. It's temporary. I want people to remember that it's just temporary. And also, you win. Some onion seeds. Thank you. So I really, this is not the plan I will of the day, grow by the these, way. I will grow these in, in my kitchen. In your kitchen, yes. Exactly. In your kitchen. We Add them to my herbs. Apartment. Thank so you so much. So onions are actually a cutback. 
So you can actually use the tops as scallions and they will grow back. Okay. And you have the same property. So those are bunching onions and green onions. Thanks Perfect. to Farmer Ken for hooking me up. I have so many seeds, y'all. And we have another seed swap coming up in January. Which I know. I'm, really, I'm really excited about it. that. And then. I'll be sharing it too. Uh, speaking of what's good folks. for you, I want I want to shout out again is Plant Based Ninja. I really need you to come to me with this, this dinner. So they do dinners monthly. They're plant based dinners. Oh, they're doing and them every month? Every month now. Oh, wow. And they are dinners surrounding love. So all types of love, parental love, child love, uh, loving your children. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I had to rephrase that. People are fucked up. Um, can we edit that out? Um, so <laughs> uh, uh, platonic love, romantic love, uh, and just all that being celebrated in one room. I went to one last month and it was absolutely lovely. It is a private dinner experience for 22 people. They have kombucha on tap and it's love. a four course meal all made uh. from scratch by Plant Based Ninja. So you can actually buy tickets for them on Plant Based Ninja's website and also they are on Instagram Dope. as well. And guess what? I'm going to be there. And speaking of love, if I can tie in herbs and things again. You sure can. A plant that's great for that, that has that like vibrational energy is rose. Rose. Rose is, it has a Venusian, you know, from an astrological perspective, it has a Venusian energy. And we know that Venus, you know, she's all about love and, and harmony of relationships. Oh, wow. So rose quartz, rose, you know, the plant, dried mm -hmm. rose. All sustainably sourced roses please people perennial it's a perennial it is a perennial i just learned that from you thank today. you oh wow on the spot i retain, <laughs> I retain information oh. very quickly sorry i've been drinking i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> thank you I, I i appreciate that and then last but not least we got a little bit of time left so we're gonna talk about the plan of the day and i think this ties in a lot to saving the vaginas and also what you do yes. the plan of the day is actually cranberries oh we have cranberries, cranberries with us i love cranberries They're the great. season's only a couple months out of the year if i i love freezing them and then mm -hmm. chewing on them nice. and also cranberries are full of vitamin c yeah as well as they of are great c. they're great for blood and they are they're made out of actually 80 percent water they're great for urinary health. Yes, that one yeah. too. They're, you know, some women are more prone to getting um, urinary tract, tract infections, infections, for yes. example. And the cranberry juice is really great um, preventatively. And also for your kidneys. Yep. Great for kidneys. And pretty much anything deep red. So we have like kidney beans or cran cranberries. Mm -hmm. But I need to clear up something, y'all. There's cranberry juice and there's cranberry cocktail. What I grew up <laughs> drinking with the different flavors is cranberry cocktail. That is sugar Shout water. Out to the folks who raised it us. is sugar water. Them. But if you go, to, if you go, even they, if you, even if it says 100% juice, it is a combination of. I really want people to get in the habit of reading, just reading labels. Just reading the label. This exactly. is made out of cranberry. And don't and have it, you tried? They try to get you with the natural flavors too. Natural there's flavors nothing is an nat umbrella term. Whenever you see that so on an ingredient Ooh, list, there's nothing natural up. about the natural See, flavors. this is why my family doesn't let me in the house because I go in there, I'm like, all right, Ma, you got to drink up. And she's like, oh, what? I don't want to give other, people, other people's glasses. I mix them up. Do you remember which glass you had? Mine I has, had, I had yes, the I had the uh, woman with the pearl necklace Yeah, on. and you've had natural cranberry straight up before, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, it's one of my favorite nice things in the world. Nice and tart. So you want straight cranberry juice. Thank and this you. is what will cure what ails you. Cam, you ready for round two? <laughs> I'm I love. It today. I love that I have a chunk of um, onions still <laughs> floating, <laughs> floating in my shot. Cranberry juice is not that bad. It's not going to burn you up. Cranberry but this juice. is this is what cures what ails you. I love it. It's low sugar. It's really tart. And did you know the base of fruit punch is fresh squeezed orange juice and cranberry juice mixed together? Punch. Love like it. Like fruit punch. Because we grew up on Hawaiian punch, which is the hardest drink in existence. <laughs> no matter how much ice you put in Hawaiian punch, it's still hot. It's not like regular hot. It's like this has been sitting in the sun Tampico, hot. Tampico, Tampico. Another hot drink. Why? How do you Remember manufacture that? drinks that are naturally hot? Did I pour myself too? I sure did. All right. Drink up, everybody. All right. So. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Ooh, cheers. Mmm. <laughs> That's tasty, huh? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> That's the real deal. Because everything else we've had before is a damn lie. Everything else we've had before is a lie. It's, that's cranberry cocktail. That is sugar, water. This is the it's real like deal. It, it tastes like glitter. It's bitter. Oh, it's bitter? <laughs> Yep, that's real. If you got if you got something you needed to cure what ails you, this should be about four dollars. And also, we black out the I'm labels. I'm gonna leave here feeling just 
fancy fantastic Strongers. yes we, we have we have food for thought and also we have Love elixirs it. running through our veins right now but remember we black out labels because on the pod the plant plug podcast if they don't cut us a check they're not getting on I'm camera blaming. i need everybody to do that in 2023 if they do not cut you a check you will not be on camera for small creators and modestly large creators please don't let that following go to your head but yes <laughs> where once again where can everybody find you okay you can find me on tiktok and or instagram Instagram at the Mud Mama, and that's Mama with two M's. Are we anticipating a website soon? Website's coming soon. Um, some other fun offerings and treats and things are coming soon um, that I want folks to have access to. So I mean, I, I'm working. Okay, we are working, and people need we to, are working. People, need, I really want people to be have patience and grace, and I've been really, really, I've been really, really lucky and fortunate to have that with uh, the people that support me. Is when it's a one or two person operation. It's a mm -hmm. lot, especially production. Shout out to Cam, everybody. Yes, <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> Cam and uh, Mr. Innovative yeah. Culture .com, and it's just it's a lot. It's Making a lot. Making content, especially around a topic like herbalism and and well, there's so and, many and, layers. And indigenous healing and and and, you know spiritual practice it's you know you're trying to break down some really complex thing into something that's like bite sized because we know y'all's attention span is like and people want to be spoon fed stuff so be you know fed stuff and have that premium that premium package top flight treatment for free <laughs> we do not do that you guys need to pay the people that that, that work with you not work for you oh my god I yes. Love it. Well, thank you, Antoinette, for being thank you for on having my channel. Me. This Merry is so Christmas. Fun. Thank oh, you. Maybe if you want to be back on the show sometime, let me know. I would love that. I want to do really do like a black. We just didn't touch round so table. many things. It goes by so fast. There's oh, we so touched much some things. Yeah. There's so much <laughs> to talk about. There you go. <laughs> we touched some there things. There you go. You can take that with you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. But yes. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Plant Plug Podcast. We are on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Anchor FM, Everywhere. as well on Instagram and on tiktok check us out and plantplugloseangeles.com as well as i am the one and only plant plug you guys happy holidays happy new year yes. thank you for letting me into your hearts your ears and your wallets <laughs> especially so your everything that we talked about is going to be in the description box below on youtube and also check out the other shows on innovativeculture.com and their innovative culture family they're also going to be in the description box below so you guys please be safe party safely yes don't drive and drink that stuff. <laughs> and then also take care of yourselves and be kind and make sure Always to listen to the next yourselves. episode of the Plant Plug Podcast. I keep saying Plant Pug. I don't have a dog, okay? Plant Plug Podcast. Sorry, I've been drinking. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Yeah. Uh -huh. See the plant plug, everything is stock, it's organic. I don't take much to put a seed inside the planet. It's way more about what you do after you plant it. It's all the cycle, go ahead, cook a plate and smash it. Yeah, she got all the knees for your seeds. Yeah, yeah, hit the knees, gotta pull out all the way.